one time. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today's a bit of a shorter vlog, we still got some interesting hands though. We played some more 2-4, ran it up good, and yeah, please remember to subscribe and turn on your notification bells, it will help you get notified if I post a video. Let's get into it. Just before I start this hand, I want to mention that we actually had a starting stack of 300, and actually played a few hands three-handed which I didn't record. We played six hands total, and well, well they were crazy, I really wish I had recorded them. I had a full house against trips, double pair, and a nut flush in the space of these hands, and I would mustered a stack of $750 before the day had even begun. Jumping into our first hand of the day, we pick up a pretty one, 5-4 of diamonds in the small blind five-handed. It folds around to the button, who opens to 14. I could be 3-betting this hand as I'm out of position, but I decide to flat and so does the big blind. The flop comes deuce 10 5 2 diamonds. Quite a dry flop on the surface, but for our hand it's pretty great. We have a pair plus a flush draw, out of position this is a standard check, and the big blind bets 15. When the button calls, I contemplate raising but decide against it on this occasion. In some flush draws this would be a good position to put in a check raise, but for this particular one, having a pair as well my hand has enough showdown value needs less protection, and has a lot more equity than just a regular flush draw, so I decide to just make the call. The turn comes the 7 of diamonds, we bink our flush, and it's pretty disguised too. Continuing our story of a weak holding, we check once again and the big blind double barrels for 55. The button makes the fold, and I'm heads up with Mr. Minrace. I think I can do one of three things here, I'm definitely not folding, but I can flat, raise small, or raise large. I lean towards a raise here as my line will look pretty suspicious and if I call now and check the river, any showdown hand of his will almost certainly check it back. If he is bluffing, we'll lose value by raising here but I'm putting on one more of a stronger holding considering he bet into two opponents twice in a row. I give the big blind a taste of his own medicine, raising up to 120, just a bit larger than a min raise. Our opponent now tanks, before unfortunately making the fold, so yeah. Now what I just said was my thought process at the time, but once again I failed to incorporate stack sizes into my thinking, he only had 120 behind after he made the initial bet of 55 on the turn, so betting 120 would leave him with roughly 50 behind, which if he'd called the turn he'd essentially be committing that 50 on the river anyway, so for that reason I just need to shove the turn, or just call if I want to continue slow playing. He says he has a high diamond, meaning he would have rivered me as the jack of diamonds did come out on the river, but yeah, we bring this pot down. On to the next one, I'm on the button with pocket 10s, it folds around to me so I open the action to 15, only the small blind makes the call. Heads up to a flop which comes 5, 4, 3, 2 diamonds. Very wet board texture which seriously favours my opponent's range, when he checks to me I definitely need a bet to protect my hand, as well as there being many draws out there that I can get value from, I bet 20, and the small blind quickly makes the call. The turn comes the 5 of spades, not the best card as he can definitely be check calling with a lot of 5s in range, which would now be beating my hand. When he checks to me, I feel I definitely need a bet once again for the same reasons as the flop. I bet $40. We're against Mr. Minraise once again, and what do you know, he almost minraises it up, but raises it up to 95. He has about 55 behind after making this move, so it's pretty much an all in or fold situation for me here. At the time, I remember disregarding the possibility entirely that he had a made hand here, although looking back it is very possible with some two pair combinations, a 5, or even a straight off the flop. He's a very loose player, so all these hands can be in range, but there are also many straight and flush draws that he can be doing this with that will be forced to call down with. So with that being said, I shove for about 150 effective, covering my opponent. He snaps me off faster than the European Super League being shut down, Jesus Christ. And when this happens, you just know you're all, you're crushed almost every single time. Even if you have the second nuts, you're probably not good here. But to my surprise, he doesn't want to show down our cards. I guess we're off to a river. It comes the seven of spades, one of the worst cards in the deck. So many good draws got there, but no, he must have had diamonds or something because he mucks and we take this one down. We're down to four-handed, and from now to the last hand, I'm not joking or exaggerating, it's been two and a half hours. Two and a half hours playing four to five man, getting decent enough hands, just not hitting any flops, or when I am, everyone folding. I've just been bleeding chips for a long, long time. You lose a lot more to blinds playing this short-handed, as well as the constant need to play more pots due to only being four people, and being more aggressive when being involved. To raise, you have to put in at least three 0.5 times the big blind on this table in order to avoid a family pot, so yeah, 
I've probably lost around $400 by just bleeding slowly. It's one thing I've really tried to work on though, being patient because before I'd just get really tilted and try to force through some bluffs, but that's how you lose money and become an unprofitable player. Sometimes you just run badly and that's what's happening here today. On to the hand, I'm on the button with ace king of hearts. I forgot to show the camera, but that's what I have. I limp. The guy we've been involved with in the past two hands is in the small blind. He's been raising 100% of hands up to $20 for the last five or so hands, so I'm expecting that this time. As predicted, he puts in his $20. It folds around to me and I bump it up to 60. Finally! Oh, he's getting something for his fans. He pretty much snap puts $200, so I reply with a swift shove of 500 total. He insta calls again, he has me covered and he flips over. Ace king of diamonds, so unless something pretty special happens, we'll just be chopping this one up. The board comes all black cards, we chop up this $1,000 pot. On to the penultimate hand of the video, we pick up pocket nines in the small blind, under the gun limps and it folds around to us. I open to 20, and the big blind and under the gun both make the call. The flop comes 4-4 four, four, queen 2 hearts. Not the best as there is an overcard to our pair, and now we're not quite sure what to do. Our hand will still be best most of the time, but being out of position it's hard to know whether to bet or not. I do decide on leading for $25, and now the player we've been battling all afternoon does his classic. Mr. Minraise is back and back everybody. He raises to 50. The under the gun player folds, and it's heads up with this player for the fourth time today in four hands. The line seems really weird that this player has taken. What's he really trying to represent? A queen? Against most players, I'd assume a flush draw or a 4 because that's the only things that's really being represented here. But this player could have anything, I'm not too sure about this spot. I make the call and we're off to a turn. The turn comes the 4 of spades. Well, now it's much less likely he has a 4, which is something he could have definitely played this hand with. I check for information, and the big blind bets 95. Now I go into the tank. I guess I should have looked at his line more, because when I'm analysing this play after the fact, the answer seems clear to me. The line is so confusing that he's playing, and what value hands does he really do this with? Maybe a queen, although I feel this is just really unlikely. If he does have a queen, he's also checking back the river almost every single time, so I'll only be losing 95 here. A 4 perhaps, but quads is pretty also unlikely, and I'm excluding the fact that he has a higher pocket pair than me, especially with someone behind when he flatted preflop, as well as the fact that he's 3 vet trigger happy preflop and would raise me with 100% frequency with 10s plus. For that reason, his range is just much more weighted towards bluffs, heart draws, or even just nothing, because I'm not even sure he'd do this with a queen, so I think I just have to call here. When I was playing, I didn't really see these ideas and ended up making a really tough laydown at the time, which I now deem as a mistake. We never find out what he had, on to the next one. We play a couple of hands three-handed at the end of this session, and this time I recorded them. I pick up king 9 suited on the button, which is also under the gun, and I open to 20. Who else but the same small blind player, 3 bets us to 65. He's been super aggressive 3 handed post flop and pre flop, so I make the call. This is a really dumb idea as he only has 350 behind, and he's going to bluff a large percentage of the time at any run out, which leaves me a bit paralyzed, but I'm a bit tilted, so oh well. The flop comes 10 ace 3 2 diamonds. He bets 50, meaning the pot is 180 and he has around 300 left in his stack. If I call, we'll have a stack to pot ratio or SPR of 1 to 1 on the turn, and if the turn is a non-diamond, I'm just going to have to fold. So with a lot of equity, my nut flush draw and two high cards, I shove for 350 total to gain fold equity from a 10 pair, ace pair, some pocket pairs, and maybe even some higher king highs than mine. Although an ace pair probably doesn't have any fold equity, oh well. We get the bad news that he quote unquote has to call and then he has an ace. He takes around 10 seconds before putting in calling chips and we're gonna need help. I should have around 40% equity if he just has a pair. If we lose this we'll be negative for the day. All 5 hands have come against this player. It all comes down to this. The turn comes. The 3 of diamonds we hit a straight straight away, please just don't have a set. The river comes the 9 of spades, we show our flush and our opponent mucks in disgust. He has zero chips remaining, he gets up and leaves the table instantly. Goodbye. Thanks for watching guys, we had a tough battle against RJ today, most of you will know him as Mr. Minrays. But yeah, it was a good session, we only played 5 hands. We were in for 300, out for 882, meaning we made a net positive of $582 today. 
So yeah, that was good. Back on the winning streak. Please remember to subscribe. Peace.